Hey there, welcome back to the floppy disk. And yes, this is that 23FD floppy, 8-inch floppy, that I made a video about, well, just a few days ago, actually. And how this thing is going to be a pain in the neck to read because it is extremely weird. It's, it's a very odd format. Well, I went digging for my uh, documentation on the 3830 control unit, and I found exactly what I needed to find. So let's take a look at that, give you a quick update. Okay, we don't really need to see the disc, so let me bring it out of the way. And I am sorry that I'm actually holding the phone and not in the tripod, simply because these, these big blue binders, well, they're big, and uh, it's just kind of difficult to deal with them. So... Uh, Hopefully this will not be too shaky. Anyway, go to the MPL and MPL attachment sections of the documentation. This is the maintenance documentation for the 3830. And we can find exactly what we need. Here we go. This describes the format of the 23FD microcode floppy. So... Here we go. We've got a nice drawing up here. And, uh, well, 32 tracks. And that's 32 tracks per inch. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why you cannot read this on a normal 8-inch floppy. Nor can you write one of these on a normal 8-inch floppy, simply because the, track, the uh, actual track spacing is weird. So we have uh, 8 sector tracks. It is hard sectored. See the uh, the holes there. In each sector, the format is this. We got a kind of a dead spot. Then we have something called the sector address byte. And uh, here's the the format here. You have a sync bit that starts the whole shebang. You get 256 uh, bytes of data and a check byte. And uh, basically, that's that's what you do for that. That's the basic format. Like I said, 32 tracks. And uh, apparently not all the tracks are used. Uh, in fact, it looks like only, only a few of the tracks are actually used. If you go up here for the microcode, you can see that, um, yeah, it's, it just looks like they're only using 0 through 7. And pretty much everything else is more for expansion and such like that. So, okay. Anyway, we have more stuff here, more information that we need to know. Uh, all the timing and uh, all that good stuff. Then we get logic diagrams. And uh, with this, we can, yeah, the, the stuff looks weird. IBM tended not to use regular, uh, regular um, uh, logic diagrams that most everyone else used. They used kind of their own thing, very blocky. And such like that but if we look through it here this 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 is where things get interesting and this is where I think I could just pull off the uh, pull off the bytes as the thing as the disk is read there is something called the byte assembly register it's a shift register essentially and after the uh, the data is separated and such like that and you get this bit stream, bytes coming out, essentially. They get shifted into here, then s stuck out, and because the uh, the microcode word is 32 bits, they actually uh, have four registers here, SA, SB, SC, and SD. And basically it just you know, fills in the bytes, makes a word, shoves it out to the microcode, uh, the control store, essentially, of the control unit. So uh, I don't really care about that, but this, if I can just grab those bytes and just, yeah, so stick a probe on there, yeah, even grab Perry, why not? Um, make sure everything is, is, is decent. Uh, yeah, then that looks like the way to go rather than just pull off uh, a raw bit stream because I, I can get everything off of here. I can get all the clocking and all the good stuff. It's If you go back up here... Yeah, it it's, tells it like it is, all in here. And, and the ALDs, the Automatic Li Logic Diagrams, uh, are far more detailed as far as 
where to probe exactly on which card on which gate and such like that this is just kind of a very rough theoretical thing that uh diagram that ibm uh, provided but yeah it's basically i can just pull off bytes off of that uh off of that register and store them so pretty easy now one thing i will say about this particular drive it's very interesting because this drive is absolutely stupid uh, I mean, it is dumb. It only really knows how to read the first track. And the idea being is the microcode on the first track, you power it up, you power on reset, it homes to, to track zero, automatically reads in uh, 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 the whole track zero. That's the, the, the first bunch of microcode. Obviously, it's not much. It's what, 4K? Uh, no, it's 2K. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a little bit of microcode that gets shoved into the control unit, the control store, the control unit, and that microcode is used to read the rest of the microcode. It is in fact kind of like a loading program, and then then the control unit is responsible for moving the head. You see here we have uh, signals for. In winding and out winding, basically, yeah, it's it's how how to how to step the uh, how to step the um, the head back and forth. So yeah, this drive is dumb, really, really dumb. But that's okay. Maybe that's good. I think it'll make it easier to pull the uh, the microcode off successfully. Now, still, this does not uh, this does not solve the problem of how to write a disk and yeah i don't know how that's going to be solved i think the only solution really is to um modify a drive uh, take take a, a drive because the standard is what 48 tracks per inch stick a new lead screw in or something like that for uh, to get a 32 track per inch um uh, uh Ge do 32 track per inch geometry i should say i don't know i i have to look into that and uh then perhaps we can we can uh perhaps write some 23 fds essentially make that mackerel uh so in any case yeah th th this project is not really pressing i do need to get this done i think it'll be a whole lot easier capturing uh well the byte stream now rather than the bit stream um archiving that and then sort of worrying about the actual physical media later um i've got a million other projects obviously I've got the the es9000 to get running but uh yeah i just got into this uh mood that yeah i really ought to archive this this microcode on these devices just in case bad things happen and you know, one day all the oxide on the floppy decides to shut off so yeah it looks like this is doable it's a weird format like i said 32 tracks per inch um it's it's oh yeah the other thing is this reading this this drive is also slow it is a uh, 90 rpm drive so i do remember that watching this and think wow that is slow uh, as far as modifying a, a floppy to get that to work, you can see all sorts of great uh, information about how to align the stuff and all that good stuff. Um, you know, I, I don't, you know, a lot of those uh, eight inch floppies, you know, they, they, they really want to work at one speed, don't they? So I may have to get a floppy, uh, a floppy drive, take out that motor, put a DC motor in there um, so I can get really good speed control well you know we'll get to that when we get to that like i said this project is um sort of uh not not pressing not pressing but i did want to follow through and find out how much of a pain in the neck this thing is going to be may not be too bad all right well uh yeah if you haven't seen the original video on the 30 uh 30 uh, the 23 fd sorry almost got the number screwed up there uh, I think it's actually might be the previous video or maybe a video before. It depends on when this gets released. I don't know. You know, these things have to sit sit in private mode uh, until 
until YouTube gives it the okay. Uh, although, what, in about a half a month, I guess that's, that's not going to make a difference for, uh, for us little fish. Um, so, yeah, I, I, another video may come out. But, yeah, just look in the past couple of videos. You'll see the, uh, the, the fishy floppy disk problem or whatever I managed to call that thing, that video. All right. Well, if you like it, leave a like. If you have any questions, uh, if you want to, uh, I know you, you may not be able to read some of this stuff too well. Uh, you know, if you have a question, just leave it in the comments or whatever. If you want something looked up in this big blue binder here for the 3830 uh, and specifically about the 23FD. Uh, yeah, just just leave a comment and I'll see about getting getting to it. I too tend to, to read all the comments and reply to an awful lot of them. Uh, so anyway, yeah, if you like the video, leave a like. Maybe share this around. Hey, if you know someone with 23FD experience, let me know. Uh, maybe subscribe. Maybe watch some past videos. Why not? Uh, and also, I do have uh, Twitter under Uniservo. So uh, I... About the only thing I do is uh, tweet these out so you can tell when a, a video is coming out or whatever. So, all right. I shall talk to you later. Bye-bye.